Welcome to the shop. So, <laughs> what a what a heavy month it's turning out to be. So, on the COVID-19 tip, wash your hands. Wash your hands. Don't go out if you don't have to. Uh, I'm learning every day. Like, I'm very grateful for some of my friends in my community. Uh, some of my really good friends are tattoo artists. That's what they deal with is bloodborne pathogens all day long. So they taught me a trick to remove my gloves safely, which I found incredibly useful. Please take a minute, reach up, reach out and talk to people in your community. Like take it seriously. This is, this is pretty, uh, pretty interesting stuff to have happen in my lifetime. I did not expect nor would I have anticipated seeing this coming. So, on to something something different, maybe positive, negative, I don't know. I've been working on these air engraving tools for a good amount of time now. It's, it's I probably should have been photo, photoing stuff like this, but I didn't. Um, and this, this, it really works. It works really well. And it took a, it took a while, so I gotta get my air. It took a while to uh, figure this out. So here. So that's an air engraving tool. Um, and my lathe really is just, it's a really crummy lathe. But I did a pretty good job uh, for what I've got. Now that my... I had all my, my tips break, otherwise I would have finished this. Uh, what I did was put a 16th of an inch, see? Little, uh, of course it falls in the most convenient spot, right? Give me a second, I'll be back. Okay, it was a good excuse to clean, I suppose. So after that, this, this fell, I was trying to describe that I, I had, besides the set screw, I had put in that one sixteenth of an inch uh, round bar in there, uh, and that allows me to clock it. But my 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 two millimeter uh, end mills broke; all of them broke. So yeah, so there's that, and that's the pneumatic graver. And like I said, it's. It's doing what a pneumatic graver should do. Uh, I just had some plastic show up in the mail to cut the templates for sharpening the gravers. Um, and well, there's something else that I'm looking for. Not that. Um, the, tip, the templates. There we go. So... I had this, it's quarter inch plastic, uh, and I had a cutting board I was gonna use, but this showed up in the mail. So I'm pretty excited about it, and I'm gonna get around to making some templates here in the coming days to sharpen the gravers. And I know I mentioned that I was gonna get to making a few other things, and I will. But uh, it, in the immediacy of, of the situation, I'm just gonna focus on engraving. I need a hobby that's gonna keep me really, really busy. and that's a lot of practice. I've never engraved before in my life, so I'm pretty excited to get to it. Um, and that'll do for a quick update, I suppose. And uh, I'm gonna get to work on something, I'm not sure, so I'll bring you back when that happens. Okay, don't have a lot of energy today, but we're gonna fake it. This is an air graver. I already showed it working, but I'll show it one more time before this is all over. This pops off is clearly just the air supply um, I'm just gonna set that off to the side for now and this is what we're left with it's just a body um, and a quick change uh, to handle the gravers when I finally get around to making some 
This is a graver machine. This acts like a hammer. That's all it does. Uh, literally just bump, 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 bump makes a, the type of motion that a hammer and chisel would make. Uh, and does it repeatedly and pretty accurately. Uh, one of the things I noticed, there's a lot of pulse graver information out there. And those graving machines are really simple to build. The air compressor, not as simple. But I, I've got that going too. But it didn't have enough chutzpah to it. It didn't go enough for me. Like, and it wasn't <clears throat> adjustable enough without a huge amount of expense in air compressor. And I've already got an air compressor, so I wanted this type of engraving machine to work with my existing equipment. Um, I've got another regulator coming given and I've got a foot pedal here already. But uh, this was where I started and I'm, and it's not, there's, there's some things that are gonna change uh, design wise, but this is a working machine. Um, so I, I'll get into it. That The handle I just machined out of aluminum, it's pretty straightforward, it's just a, a handle. Uh, I got this, nobody puts springs in these, and I put a little tiny spring in mine, and I noticed that it quiets it down a little bit, and it's a pretty loud machine. Um, this guy out. Why do I do that? I always do that. Get the wrong size out, right? Okay. So now we got the piston, and I and I did put an O-ring on the piston because I didn't want to have to use my janky uh, lathe to try to get that angle correct up there to make the piston come up and slam back down. The way I dealt with the the shaft, I just reamed the whole thing out to three eighths of an inch, seven hundred fifty thousandths, and made a little brass insert in there to uh, separate the uh, primary air chamber from the exhaust chamber. Um, <clears throat> you can see the exhaust holes on the bottom. There's four of them, and the intake on top. The air goes in the piston gets forced down and then air breathes out and it goes and it does it really fast like I don't understand how it works exactly and I won't pretend that I do but I know it works really well uh, a little bit of research on steam engines is is what led me to this that and and a whole lot of YouTube research uh, and there there was another guy building this type of machine on YouTube uh, and I don't know how much success he had at it. I know he switched up to the uh, uh, pulse style air engraver. Uh, these are really complicated. They're hard to build. Uh, and it's built now. Um, and is working for me. And I can't say that everybody's going to have that same degree of fortune though. So, put the piston back in. When it, when it wants to go back in, I suppose. Is it lined up? There we go. Oh, we tap back in. So we got the pistons in there, and that—that's—that's that's a pretty, pretty well honed cylinder. Um, where'd that little spring go? Now I just put it somewhere. See what happens when I put things somewhere smart. Like every time, every single time. Um. Oh, there it is. Yeah. And then I put my little tiny spring back in. And again, the only purpose that serves is to quiet it down a little bit. I don't have the piston hammering around that much. Then uh, I put the, the handle back on, which really is just a seal. That's kind of all it does. Um, and I'm gonna just stick this in the vise real quick and tighten down that handle real good because I'm a little obsessed with things like that. So now I should be able to hook up air and it should bark and should just run. So let's test that concept out. 
together. Um, let's see. Put my air nipple. See, woo do Put the air nipple back in, and uh, you can tell that I I thought this out really clearly. So, well, the air's back in. The cylinder's still banging around in there. Um, here's the the graver head, uh, and I haven't built gravers yet, so that's coming. Um, and like that. And if the compressor kicks on, don't get mad. Um, so again, sh sure does, my hand's totally in the way, but whatever, it sure doesn't look like much uh, to me. Maybe to you it looks amazing, but to me it just looks like a pile of junk, so. Yeah, in the meantime, that's a working air engraver. Um, so next up, I suppose, we'll be making some jigs to sharpen some engraving tips, uh, or graver tips, I'm still learning the terminology. And, uh, and with a little bit of luck, I'll be engraving before too long at all. Um, until next time, if it suits you, take a moment and like and subscribe. Uh, and I'm going to be building lots of stuff. I'm not sure what, but I'm going to be building it. Um, and I'm going to definitely keep moving with the engraving because I'm pretty excited uh, just to have something to practice obsessively. And and that's just like penmanship or, or welding. Like I know gas tungsten arc welding, TIG welding was like that for me. Uh, just need something to focus on while I'm in my shop, spending my time building stuff again take a moment and like and subscribe if it suits you it's very nice to see you please take care wash your hands if you have to go out uh, i'm sorry uh do your best i don't know i mean what what can anybody really say in this situation do your best try not to panic and uh, be competent about your hygiene uh and take people's advice like it's in any given situation like there's somebody out there that knows more about it than I do uh, and I rely on those people when I'm looking for information thank goodness for them um, or we'd all be in more trouble and I most certainly would be uh, seeing as I'm almost 50 what I'm 49 now that puts me right up there in a, in a huge risk zone to, to get the, the virus and die so you know let's all try to avoid that wear a face mask it doesn't even matter if it's a fancy one just wear it because it'll keep your blah, you know coughing and fluids out of other people's faces it's just a polite thing and responsible thing to do um yeah anyway what else can i say about it hunker down stay safe uh build something cool so i took a moment and uh made some little stainless steel pretty things and uh, next up I suppose is making the templates to make up the graver heads so that I can actually engrave something uh, all these weird terminology always oh, something new for me um, so again if it suits you take a moment and like and subscribe that'd be awesome uh, and I'm gonna be moving on these gravers for a while uh, I still have to build a shop press and a couple other things. I, I like my brain has just been in make engraving machine mode for since I discovered them. Now I've built them. Um, uh, it's about making gravers and fine tuning them and get them getting them to suit my needs. Uh, so until next time, I'll look forward to seeing you uh, then on that side of the video world take a moment if it suits you and like and subscribe because like who doesn't want to see something this interesting um and i i spared everybody the machining and holy cow like three works three weeks four weeks of effort that it took to get to this point but you know i think it's kind of just a it's just a neat thing Nah.